Hello friends, welcome to UGC E PG Partshala. Myself, Professor Mehdi Tahir, Department of Geography, Jamia Milia Islamia, will speak on possibilism in geography, which is part of the paper, Geographical Thought. This module has been prepared by my dear colleague, Dr. Taruna Bansal from the same department. In this model, the following are the major objectives to enquire the historical background of possibilism in geography, the rise of possibilism in geography, criticism of possibilism in geography. Now we will deal with the introduction to begin with. The relationship between man and environment has been in of increasing interest to geographers throughout its history. One can definitely say that the idea of geography as the study of man-environment relationship has a long history and has led to a long-standing debate about the position of man in relation to nature. Determinism and possibilism are the two mutually elite philosophies in geography which are centered on man and his place in nature. Both these doctrines try to place man within the ambit of environment and deliberate on the issue whether man should be looked upon as a passive agent or an active force while interacting with the environment. In this process, he not only adapts to the environment, but also brings changes within it. The deterministic point of view states that human activities are controlled by the environment. They propose that man is just a passive force in front of nature as it is nature which determines man's activities and in no way man is free to control his life. Possibilism on the other hand argues that the relationship between man and nature is not so as human beings have the capacity to choose between a range of possible responses to the physical conditions which vary. Now we go on to the historical background of this. Since ancient times, determinism has been important notion defining man environment relationship. The idea was that man is a product of nature or physical environment molds the human nature, human culture. Most of early scholars like Aristotle, Eratosthenes, Strabo, Hippocrates were deterministic in the approach. For example, Aristotle believed that the world's climatic zones that is frigid, which is very cold, temperate, moderate and tolerant, very hot, determine habital habitability of man. In medieval time, France scholar Montesquieu in his work, The Spirit of the Laws discusses how climatic conditions govern the degeneration and persistence of cultural traits. The philosophy even dominated the writings of Arab scholars, especially Al Masudi, Ibn Battuta, and Ibn Khaldun. In early modern period, Kant vehemently supported de determinism. Ritter, one of the founding fathers of modern geography, also had a tilt towards anthropocentric approach and advocated geographical determinism. Ratzel also propagated new determinism, wherein he emphasized that man holds higher position than other organisms, still accepting that determinism is a dominant force in explaining the man environment relationship. In the second volume of Anthropogeographic, he analyzed socioeconomic activities and culture of man in relation to the physical environment. This concept at a later stage became an inspiration for Vedel de la Blache, who stated the same. Apart from determinism, scientific concepts like deductive approach, Darwin's theory of evolution, Newtonian cause and effect relationship in the latter half of the 19th century and early 20th century influenced a number of geographers in France. 
This led to the foundation of modern school in France called as French School of Geographical Thought, which had its root in the philosophy of possibilism. While Le Labrache, Gallios, Brunis, Demingian, Emmanuel de Montaigne, Blancard, and Sore all advocated the paradigm of possibilism. This philosophy is the direct contrast to determinism and puts man in the first place, that is, man and no longer the earth or climate influences man's habitability, thus presents man as an active rather than the passive agent. The rise of possibilism, we are going to discuss this here. The doctrine of philosophy tries to explain the relationship of human being with the environment in different ways. It puts human at a higher level and regards it as an active agent here. It is a principle which claims that environment provides opportunities and man being an economic man chooses from those possibilities. Fabio in his work A Geographical Introduction in History stated there are no necessities but everywhere possibilities and man as the master of these possibilities is the judge of their relevant use. The roots of possibilism can be traced back to the works of Plato, who is considered the master of deductive reasoning. Though his idea went into gloom for hundreds of years, the contrasting doctrine of determinism continued to grow and flourish. It got support in the writings of French scholar of the 18th century, Montesquieu, who is credited of developing a doctrine analogous to modern paradigm of possibilism. According to him, man possesses free will and has the ability to choose from a series of opportunities. Similar thoughts were also put forward by another 18th century French scholar, Buffon. He believed that man was ordered to conquer the earth and even transform it. Their views laid the base for crypto-possibilistic approach. In the 19th century, George Perkins, Marsh and Kirchhoff made an attempt to put forward a non-deterministic approach to human geographers. They focused on man himself. It was only in the latter half of the 19th century that under the leadership of Vidal de la Blache, a very important, that is, the possibilistic view of man environment relationship developed. The focus of this philosophy was nature has set boundaries and provided possibilities for human settlement. But the way a person responds to these conditions or adjusts depends on the traditional way of life. Weidel rejected the concept of material determinism and advocated favorability. He even rejected Durkheim's opinion of human geography as social morphology rather insisted that man was a partner and not a slave of the environment. He was critical of Darwinian Ratzelian heritage which proposed environmental determinism and put forth the concept of possibilism. He sought a scheme for understanding the interaction of nature and culture that involved environmental determinism and radical possibilism to seek answers or solution for the dichotomy between the human and the physical environment. He vehemently rejected the idea that society and nature stood out as adversaries in human nature confrontation. According to him, Man was part of the nature and therefore its most active collaborator. To resolve this dichotomy, he generated the concept of gender divide. Gender divide way of life concludes all activities, practices and techniques that characterize the adaptation of a human group to the milieu, the natural surroundings of the habitat. Blash pointed out that the same way of life had different interpretations for various human groups. Thus, 
his works gave a sound methodological as well as philosophical foundation to the doctrine of possibilism. This growth somewhat weakened the hold of Darwinian determinism within the geographical thinking. In the 20th century, possibilism got strong hold after the publication of Blasch's article in 1913, wherein he categorically stated that geography as a discipline seeks to measure and, and role of man in modifying the earth's surface. This was further strengthened when his book was published in 1921 and the English translation of it in 1926, although posthumously. He observed that nature gives man materials which have the inherent needs as well as limitations, thus leading them to limited uses. Possibilism was further flourished by acclaimed historian Fabre, who put forward an important point as follows, whatever the men do on in their own environment, they cannot completely get rid of themselves completely. Febre emphasized human initiative and motivation against the environment, destroying the environmental deterministic reasoning and as part of the environment of any group as well as other humans because they belong to the next group's cultural surroundings or the constraints of the in environment are influenced by such thinking. He stated that in the view of possibilis, a homogeneous region that has got uniformity does not necessarily result in a homogeneous society. This is because people residing in any area have the choice of possibilities time to time and also in the quantity they want. Peronis followed Blasch's idea and took it to the next level. He not only transmitted Blasch philosophy in France, but also disseminated it to different parts of the world. In 1910, his monumental work, The History of Geography was published. His prime focus was on the actualities of exploitation of the earth by man and he commented the following, the power that is meant is limited and it meets in it the barriers of nature that it cannot cross human activity can change within its boundaries and its environment, but it cannot be removed from its environment. It can only modify it, but it can never cross it and it will always be conditioned by it. He also stated the following, nature is not compulsory, but the approval is important. He also comments on the unremitting control of the nature of man. He is of the opinion that although man tries to exploit nature, nature superimposes himself itself on man's activities. With regard to the power of human beings, he remarks that whatever said and done, the power and means that man as a community processes are re restrictive in nature and cannot be overshadowed by the physical environment, though they have the capability of modifying it. Therefore, it can be said nature does set certain limits or restricts restrictions on man's activities. The nature and extent can vary from place to place and time to time. In short, his interest focused on man's occupation on the earth, whether it was regulated by environmental conditions or not. He concentrated more on the relationship between man and the physical environment and does not deal with the influence of the latter on the human community. But this does not mean that he views man as a passive being, rather stated that man is an active agent as he plays a very crucial role in changing and modifying his environment. Now outside France, the American scholar Bowman was a staunch follower of possibilism. In his work, Geography and the Social Sciences, which was published in 1934, he stated that as the knowledge of man widens, 
his association with his environment, habitat or even an event, condition changes. In the process, it becomes more, com more complex. In this entire process, he gradually replaces the character of the environment through uniformity. He cited the example from the potato and maize plants which were unknown at the time of pre-Columbian Europe. Entire land was surveyed to know the relevance of these plants and when results came, they transformed the entire European economy. This defines possibilistic view of nature that nature is not mandatory but permissive. It allows man to do as he wants. Another proponent of possibilism in the United States was Karl Sauer, who was highly influenced by the work of German scholar Scuttle. According to Scuttler's work on human habitat, which was his main inspiration, he says that the habitat of man is the product of man's relation with his workplace and conditioned by their traditions, heritage and social groups. In the same direction, Sar propagated field studies on aerial expressions of man's activities in his works. In his important, he has explained in his own words, man is the latest agent in the fashioning of the landscape. Many scholars gave the opinion that the landscape paradigm of Sar is an integral part of the possibilist philosophy. The prime focus of the paradigm was to study the processes that occurred on the surface of the earth and how they transform the landscape from the past, that is from pre-human stage to the present world. The cultural landscape which is created by humans is not the end product of the physical environment, rather it is crafted by the settings and patterns that exist in the environment on which cultural representatives leave their strong imprints. The concept of sequent occupants given by Whittlesey is another antithesis of the doctrine of environmental determinism. This doctrine establishes the genetics of each stage in terms of its predecessor. The main crux of this concept is that if there is any change in the way of living of a particular region, it will automatically lead to resource appraisal of that special concerned region. He further elaborates saying that there can be quick shift or swift shift in the regional character of the area and this is not dependent on sequential development of that region, rather on the relationship between man and his environment which is basically the both components that is the physical as well as the cultural environment over centuries and over time. Another important factor on which possibilists deliberated in the study of historical geography was the importance of the habitat. Thadam, 1934, in one of his writings claimed that habit is an integral part of man and once they establish with man's, within man's personality, they become part of his environment. Not only this, over time it also exerts considerable influence on his entire setting. In this regard, Tatham supports Faber's view that nature does not act on man's needs, rather it is man who chooses maybe one, two or maybe more from various means in order to satisfy his growing needs. Futility is also associated with the French school of geography. French geographers saw a series of possibilities for human development in the physical environment, but argued that the development in the real is in the real development was related to the culture of related people, perhaps in the field of extremes like deserts and tundra. It can be safely said that in spite of technological developments, man is bounded by nature. Possibilists have time and again taken this as a reference. Possibilism also found its advocate in Russia, where scholars were focusing on the notion of indeterminism. Scholars like Chernoshevsky 
and Petrovsky writings have their roots in the paradigm of possibilism. Pokrovsky in 1931 said that man has power over nature and nature does not determine man's economic activity. We go on now to the various criticism of possibilism. Despite the fact that humans have many possibilities in some physical setting, they cannot go against the instructions set by their physical environment. Many contemporary thinkers have criticized the possibilistic approach. Taylor, according to him, the society should choose exclusively and this is more important for geographer. Their work is not to explain nature, but to study all the problems related to natural environment and humans, human and the cultural landscape that he makes. The possibilities do not encourage the study of the physical environment, rather promotes humanism in geography. Determinism, on the other hand, tilts geography towards nature. It tries to balance the imbalance created by exaggerating the role of culture and ignoring the importance of the natural environment. Certain implications logically follow from this distinction. In the first place, it seems clear that possibilism has virtually no connection with the philosophical problem of determinism and free will. If the environment alone has to be considered, it may well be true, as Faber State insisted, that there are no necessities but everywhere possibilities. But this leaves unsolved questions of why one possibility should be selected rather than another. Unless the geographer follows the chain of cause back and back through space and time, the psychological or metaphysical depths, the problem of freedom and necessity remains unresolved, nor are other particular determinisms banished. In fact, all that possibilism does or can do is to assert that whether or not human action is free or determined, it is not determined solely by geographic conditions, a denial that leaves the door wide open to the forceful entry of other controls. Geographers may agree with Tatham that the Danish decision to turn from wheat growing to daring involved deliberate choice rather than environmental constraint. But this still leaves the question unsolved. Was the choice free or was it necessitated by some other factor, psychological? political or economic, maybe. In point of this fact, the only form of determinism with which possibilism is compatible is geographic determinism. The field is left wide open for other particular determinism as well as the overarching necessitarian principle. It was realized of this fact which led Platt in 1948 involved in a plea for the reality of human choice to complain that complex determinism may persist as a false guide in geography, even after environmentalism has been banished from the field. Conversely, it is doubtful whether many deterministic philosophers have been sympathetic with their presumed allies working in geography. Freud was a determinist in general and in particular, but he was certainly not a geographical one, whereas communists committed both to economic determinism and the transforming power of social revolution, repudiate any theory that the Marxist vision may be frustrated by an environmental veto. It is possibilism which such determinists favor. Now we can conclude, Freud was a determinist in general and in particular, but he was certainly not a geographical one, whereas communists committed both to economic determinism and the transforming power of social revolution, repudiate any theory that the Marxist vision may be frustrated by an environmental veto. 
it is possibilism which such determinists definitely favor. Thank you.